Okay, hello everyone, it's Chaplain April, and I've got a friend with me today. This is Sarah, <laughs> and uh, Sarah is um, someone that I've known for a long time. <laughs> Let's see, how did we meet, actually? Um, so we met through uh, one of your sisters. Okay. Uh, I was roommates with her in college, so. Okay. Yeah. And that was a long time ago. Oh my gosh, thousand... 10, 2011. Okay, so it's yes. been it's been a while. <laughs> and then when I was at church, I saw you there. This was years ago. I'm like, oh, that's Sarah. And you were pregnant with, I guess, your first, first child. son. Yes. <laughs> and so then we were at the same church together. And then uh, when I joined the prayer team, Sarah was leading the prayer team at church. And so I'm like, that's that's. Such a small world. <laughs> it is a small world, and there's so many people on the on the team, and they're all di diverse backgrounds and everything. Yes. So, yes. prayer warriors. Yes. Right? <laughs> we love it. We need more. Yeah. Yes. So I invited Sarah over to kind of give uh, her testimony, and I didn't realize you were telling me earlier that you grew up in a Christian household. So you grew up in Colombia. Right, so maybe we should do a Spanish video. That would oh, be kind of cool, fun. right? <laughs> we should do something we in Spanish. Switch to Spanish. <laughs> yeah, we could switch, and right? And put like subtitles. I know. What should we do? Huh? <laughs> maybe some words that I'll forget, and then I'll say them in Spanish. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, and so. Or so, the other way around. So tell us how you grew up. You know, kind of in a Christian household. And yeah. So, um, my parents are, I guess they're like first generation Christians. Um, they were, when they were teenagers, they, um, somebody invited them to church. And so then mm -hmm. they, you know, they had this, like, they wanted to know more about God and everything. So this is like back in the eighties. Okay. So, uh, wait, seven, 77, yeah, eighties. And then, um, so they went into this, um, I don't know if you've heard of Youth with the Missions. Mm -hmm. So yes. they are from two different parts of Colombia, like completely um, opposite. Oh, okay. <laughs> they met at, at the, one of the at Waiwama, cool. one of the bases. So I'm like one of the Waiwamers ba babies. So oh, I pretty much grew up wow. okay. in like the mission field, kind of. Okay. Uh, my mom was a school um, principal, helping with education and stuff. And like my dad was more in the like media. Uh, area and videos and all of that. Oh wow! Okay. So yeah, so I grew up and like pretty much I was born into a Christian household. My parents, you know, love God and uh, were missionaries, and uh, so I pretty much I grew up with like my all my friends were Christians. I went to Christian school. Like oh, that was okay. the thing to do. Like I think I had a baptism with the Holy Spirit very young um, my mom will teach like Sunday school mm -hmm. um, so um, she was preparing things for uh, the, the class she was going to teach the kids about um, the Holy Spirit who the Holy Spirit was and mm -hmm. just pray with us um, to receive it so yeah I was asking my mom like how do you um, how, what are you doing so she was telling me well this this is who the Holy Spirit is mm -hmm. and uh, do you want to receive him and I was like yeah so I started um, praying and then started speaking in tongues and everything okay. so yeah and that's a thing I was wanting to do not to cut you off but I was wanting to do a video on the Holy Spirit because he's the forgotten person of the Trinity really and um, and so a lot of people don't understand like the baptism of the Holy Spirit how that's different than having the Holy Spirit but if you're baptized in the Holy Spirit then you're gonna have the evidence of speaking in tongues and things like that which I have that also but it's not real common these days no, that, that, that many people don't really talk about it and I think it's like it's such a such a loss <laughs> because no. I couldn't do like you know like Jesus said like uh, it's better for me to leave so that you can have the Holy Spirit the Holy which Spirit. is like yeah if we don't rely on him like he's the one that teaches us who the father is mm -hmm. he's the one right. that teaches us who jesus is like so jesus could only be in a certain place in a certain time because his body was limited to space and time like we are mm -hmm. but the holy spirit could be 
like and so many people at the same time and mm -hmm. doing different things and it's just beautiful now in yeah. the prayer team when we're praying like I'm um, a group of people praying about something and then I hear another person hey God's been saying this to me I'm like wait it's the same mm -hmm. thing we were talking about oh, wow. and it's like oh cool. God's doing a certain thing at a certain time and as you get closer to God like mm -hmm. it just could start in everybody so it's just yeah. beautiful how he works things and it's yeah. so fun like mm -hmm. Christian life it doesn't have to be boring like right. it's not um once you get to know who the Holy Spirit is your best friend like mm -hmm. you're you, like I'm starting a new business I'm like okay Lord what what is your plan like this morning mm -hmm. I was like what's your plan for today and he's <laughs> like downloading like he's telling me hey this is oh, what your wow. team is about this is what you should do like <laughs> and I'm like yes I'm like writing everything oh, down cool. and yeah. I'm like if I try to do it on my own I'm like I'm trying to figure it out like what is my purpose what is it what is that but God has a plan he already mm -hmm. knows that he's your best friend like he's your you're you're co-laboring like mm -hmm. you, the things that you're doing when you surrender to Jesus what you're doing is not for yourself it's yeah. for others so like how does he want you to implement that in the earth like he's mm -hmm. super interested about working with you because yeah. so anyway I could go on yeah, <laughs> and like we have the the chat with all the prayer team members and so you know who can we pray for today and we're praying for this person and this person needs this and that's that's such a blessing because you can you can ask for things in there you know and get get a bunch of people praying with you which is awesome yes so and then with the holy spirit it's like it all the greats like of the faith you know like the commander what do you what do you call them that's not the right word generals generals the journals of the faith they have all had that secret of the Holy Spirit, the one that leads and guides them through and, and produces the miracles and stuff. So I noticed that and I have a lot of books on the Holy Spirit. I haven't read them all, but <laughs> I'm supposed to do a study on it and do a video, but anyway, it's not what this is about. It's working but, on. <laughs> but it really is, it, it is a huge thing. So, so they were, you say they were missionaries, your parents? Okay, so were they missionaries in Colombia? Yes, so like when you're with one, one, you're pretty much a missionary because they don't really, uh, you don't have a salary. So it's like, right. oh, everything is by faith. And like, yeah. you know, you raise your own funds to, you know, mm -hmm. they even sustain and not have a place to stay. So everything, so you're pretty much. And then also my dad will go, so like they have a, they have programs for this discipleship training and they will have, um, I guess they call them crusades or mm -hmm. and then you go to a certain place for a certain amount of time and then you preach you serve you mm -hmm. um talk to people about jesus you help you know in kids and in, in churches you go and help churches uh, mm -hmm. with whatever it is that they need uh, practical mm -hmm. needs spiritual needs like everything mm -hmm. so that's kind of like what they did but also my mom was helping them because um, she had a background in um education Mm -hmm. helping her uh, helping them do the the school so they had a christian school there oh, wow. okay. in colombia so she helped them with another lady to um establish like the school there okay. and it was kind of like montessori so it was very okay. like uh and so traditional non-traditional but still they had grades and stuff mm -hmm. um but it was all bible based you know they're okay. very good on like Christian worldview and all these things and like mm -hmm. government like they teach all this yeah They're, they have so much wow. so much to, to learn about but yeah so that's I went to school there okay and I went to school again like then after a while we moved to another city my mom is from the coast area of Colombia so we moved to Colum to that so we stopped being with Y1 but we still oh, okay. uh, we're involved in a local church okay. so that's um it's really fun like we were always involved in church somewhere sometime like we will close down the churches and yeah uh, that's a life of a missionary kid I'm a missionary kid too so <laughs> you're in church like every time the doors open and when they close and there's no one there and yeah you just that's your life yeah so yeah so but I never went to Colombia I was always in Costa Rica, um, but I've always wanted to go there, go to South you America should. or any other country. So, <laughs> so yeah, maybe one day. <laughs> but you were saying that um, 
So at first, when you when you grow up in the faith, it's kind of like <clears throat> your parents are covering you. Your parents are kind of where you get your source from of your faith. But then when you grow up, it's kind of like you got to do it for yourself. You were telling me a little bit about that. So when did it become real? Like, I have to do this for myself. Yeah. Right. So um, when I graduated from high school, I was at a crossroads. So like in Colombia, like things are not like here. Like you did have, well, kind of like my situation was like, what am I going to do with my life? Like, where am I going to, like, where am I going now? Mm -hmm. What is my next step? And I mm -hmm. like, who am I giving my life to? Because it's mm -hmm. like, is it, you know, a career? Is it a business? Is it a family? Like, I was in that yeah. crossroads. So I just started reading my Bible. So I graduated from high school and started reading my Bible. Like, I was inhaling the Bible, really. Oh, wow. I would sit there and read for hours. And I was learning English and I was working mm -hmm. uh, and I would just read the Bible and uh, I got to a place I was like I wanted to be a psychologist I wanted okay. to be uh, because my mom was a speech uh, I was um, a school counselor so I wanted to be mm -hmm. a psychologist and in Colombia like I started looking at the schools and universities and but once I actually I was like when I sat down and thought about like my life like how can I help somebody else? How can I counsel somebody if if I don't have the truth? Like what mm. truth is, what what hope, like what hope am I yeah. giving them? Am I just giving them like a you know, a pacifier or am I really dealing with their real true issues? Mm. So then I was like, only God can really like do that for a person. So mm -hmm. In my own life, I was like, where is my faith? Like, do I believe what my parents have been teaching me? Mm -hmm. Or is it like, actually, this is what I believe God is. Is what's written here in the Bible. Is it true or not? Mm -hmm. So I just really, I prayed and I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to be a psychologist if, if what I'm telling other people is, is lies or it's not helping them. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to get my, like my foundation right. So I wanted... Um, so I decided to go to a uh, discipleship training school with YWAM, okay. kind of like what my parents did, but this was in Puerto Rico. Um, oh, wow. okay. Yeah, so God opened the doors for me to, to come and I was just like, I remember like being in my bed, reading my Bible and praying and like reading about Abraham, how he had to leave his father and mother mm -hmm. and go where God would tell him. Mm -hmm. It was really like, I felt like God telling me like, are you gonna leave your father and mother and go where I'm telling you? Like, oh, are wow. you gonna follow me for for me? Yeah. Or you know what are you gonna do? So mm -hmm. that was kind of like a choice. Like I was just crying and I was just like there oh, with wow. my my moment with Jesus. But um, yeah. Then after that, like all the doors opened, the right doors opened, the wrong doors closed, and I was yeah on my way to Puerto Rico <laughs> by wow. myself. I was what seventeen years old. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. What did they have you doing there? What did so, uh, so at the discipleship training, they do different classes. So like every day, um, you you have classes during the day. You have a devotional time. You have a time where you're like serving in the in the base and um, doing different tasks here and there. And then you're you know studying, reading the Bible, and just the fellowship your relationship with God and with other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's like a six month training okay and then after the six months you go somewhere and do like a uh like an outreach okay yeah so my, i did my outreach there in puerto rico so i got to see this like meet like the people there wow. um people just treat you so well mm -hmm. and then when like the, the people in puerto rico are just beautiful and they're, mm -hmm. they're so hospitable and like full of life and like they just receive you with like like you've been their best friend for for life <laughs> i have to go there because my my son's uncle and aunt, aunt and uncle live there now so i'm oh. like great time for us to go visit. yeah <laughs> it's so, so fun it's yeah. so good and people i was there in christmas 
Okay. So like everybody, like we got there oh. and the grandma was like, hey, come here, <laughs> eat this. And I'm like, I'm full. And they're like, no, eat this. And I'm like, oh they will not. Yeah. So they're super. They feed you. They, they feed take care you. Of yes. you. That's how they, I was in Costa Rica. Take you in like your family. Yeah. Yeah. And I just met them. And <laughs> so I was like, yeah, oh. That's awesome. Yeah. And then from Puerto Rico, how did you end up over here? So we had, so when we were in Colombia, like we had a missionary um the church that we helped like my parents got involved in the local church and this is a church where uh, people with like my mom met them when she was first um learning about god and like first you know the first church that she went to and this, this. so this um they after many years they started a church so we got involved like once my parents moved back to colom to barranquilla mm -hmm. they um they got plugged in into this church helping and everything so there was a missionary um that came uh, to to help them with education and stuff from here from the states from Tulsa okay. so he needed a place to stay in Bogota we lived in Bogota we okay. moved back and he stayed at our home um and he's always had like um his ministry is called bridge builders so they oh. build bridges with people from the states and, and Latino uh, okay. hit Latino countries, uh, with for opportunities in education. So, we he, he was staying at our home and everything. So he stayed a couple of times, like different times that he had to uh, overnight uh, to to travel okay. here. And um, so when he found out, he came and I was studying English. So I was like, next time we see each other, mm -hmm. we're gonna speak English. And I was mm -hmm. like, okay, um, mm -hmm. well. Little did you know, like he came back to Colombia and he stayed at my house. Like, where is Sarah? And it's like, oh, she's in Puerto Rico. So, like, you need a oh. American visa to go to Puerto Rico. Um, so he's like, oh, well, I want to invite her to come to Tulsa oh, okay. and see what opportunities they have. I was supposed to have only two weeks, um, but I was also in the middle of praying and like, Lord, what's my next step? Like, mm -hmm. I wanted to uh, Puerto Rico. Um, Wagon has a base in Kona, Hawaii, where they have like oh, a okay. counseling. Uh, university and like they have other stuff but they have counseling was one of the things I wanted to do so I was like well I could just go up to Tulsa and then go and visit have family in, in the states and go visit them and then go to Kona and Hawaii mm -hmm. I was like my plan but yeah. <laughs> I there was like I came for two weeks in Tulsa and then God opened the doors for me to go to Bible school there okay. in Tulsa and then Who um, are you? Or no, you this somewhere? is um, Victor Bible Institute Victor was the okay. name back then okay. but it's uh, uh, yeah, it was where T.L. Osborne had the building oh, okay. so it's not it, awesome. they, they gave the building to um, Victory which it was a Billy Joe Doherty. I don't yeah. Know if you're... Oh yes. Yes. yes so yes. he was one of our teachers, and I think T.L. Osborne was one of our teachers. Awesome. No. Yeah. It was like no. he was. It was That's towards the amazing. end time of his life. Yeah. Oh my was... gosh! Because T.L. and Daisy came to Costa Rica oh, wow. a couple times, you know, and I I went and saw them in person and wow. heard them. But yeah, that was amazing. Yeah. I don't. Is she still alive? I don't know if Daisy's still is. Probably. But... I don't know. I, I oh, yeah. used to see his daughter Donna, uh -huh. I think, because their office. I used to, so I worked as a work study, you know, in our offices, and I would pass by their offices because they still had their, oh, wow. they still had their offices in the building, even though like Victory was the one that had. Oh, okay. Um, but it was it was so cool and like seeing all the things that they brought from Africa oh, there. I can imagine. Um, but they took the the building down oh. when they opened the the highway so and then Billy Joe Doherty has his own church too yeah yeah, yeah. so that he still had the, the the church in another part but um this was the Bible school it was oh, in that okay. building interesting yeah wow yeah, that's really cool. it was really fun <laughs> I didn't realize like now looking back I'm like wow <laughs> all the wealth of knowledge that we got in oh, the school because I yeah it was pretty awesome I pretty much learned English there because I did have some English but it wasn't very good, but once mm -hmm. you're listening to all these classes mm -hmm. and like speaking in English, like from nine to like <laughs> noon, and then I went to like work there with like people that spoke English, like I had to learn it. And I yeah. live with, with American people, so like I had to 
speak to them in English, even yeah. though they spoke some Spanish, they will not speak Spanish to me, so. Oh, wow. Well, right. that's how I learned Spanish, too, because when you're running around town and you want to buy something at the store, it's like you have to know, you have to just learn what to say. You know, you go to the corner store in Costa Rica, they call them pulperias, but I don't know what they call them in, in Colombia. Tiendita. Tiendita. <laughs> and then in other countries, they call them bodegas. Yeah. So, yeah, if you, you go, you, you just learn. Yeah. How to. You hear speak. somebody say You have something. to learn. Yeah. <laughs> There's like, no if way. I say that, then I'm going to get that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's the best way to be immersed. Yes. I think so. So I'm teaching my kids Spanish because, yeah, I that do, way yeah. they they keep it. It's hard when both of you are, ha like, both of the parents don't speak it. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's way harder. But yeah and it's harder when well for me it was hard because my husband at the time didn't know spanish and spanish is not my first language so that was even harder it's yes. like i just i don't know i should have done it but yeah, you don't want to be teaching them wrong the wrong words yeah so <clears throat> yeah so then so then you were getting serious about your faith at that time yes yes yeah. so like i was learning all the things about you know the Libras authority, you know, they are very like mm -hmm. mortal faith school. So it just like worship was like every day we had worship, like intimacy with God. Mm -hmm. We had like, you know, like how to believe God for miracles, like our mm -hmm. miracles for today. Like, yeah, yes, uh, they are. <laughs> yes, they are. We'll just put that out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you didn't know, God's still doing miracles. God's still God, doing miracles. God's today. still talking <laughs> yeah. to people. Yeah. Some people think he's not, you yeah. know, and they think all of these things back in the Old Testament was for then and it's not for now and that's not true. Yeah, so. and like there is a whole Bible for a reason, like we mm -hmm. can pick and choose what what applies or just right. because you haven't seen a miracle yet doesn't mean that or maybe because you pray for somebody and they didn't get healed and right. that doesn't mean that god's not doing it like mm -hmm. there's so many other things that play a part yeah um and like it's not our place to say who gets healed or who doesn't mm -hmm. like that's god's business right. like our job is to have faith and believe pray. and yeah. pray and and stand in the god we know what god can do mm -hmm. um I mean, I pray for healing at the hospital, you know, I mean, if somebody wants me to, I don't just go and pray for everybody be healed, but yeah. I will pray for healing if, if the person's a believer and they want yeah. me to, but you don't know, God could start healing them now and it could be a slow process or next month, you know, or, or he might be healing their emotions. Sometimes death is a healing. Yeah. So really I just look at it like that, you know, it's it up to is. God to heal in whatever way that he wants to. And exactly. I just have to pray. So. Yeah. Yeah. I stand in the gap and pray and mm -hmm. believe and you partner with there. Cause there are so many things that have to do with sicknesses. They're not just mm -hmm. a one thing. Like right. if this is gone, then my life is perfect. Well, uh -huh. mm, like there, what's contributing to that? Right. Like what is the root? Like what right. is, I don't know. That's, right. that's always but yeah. you, you said when you ha were pregnant with your first son or when you had your first son, that's when you really got serious about. Yeah, so I went to college. I, I went to college and like my faith got a little bit, like I was like super passionate about God and everything and I wanted to be in ministry and married like a pastor and like oh, wow. <laughs> well, I, once I finished like uh, yeah. uh, Bible school, but things didn't really like pan out that way mm -hmm. <laughs> um and then just like my faith like through college even though i went through a christian college um uh, you know if you're not it's like a tree like you're not watering it get, it dwindles or exactly. like even your relationship with god if you're not constant constant or like keeping the connection going nurturing like then it, yeah nurturing uh, then it kind of dwindles. So like I stopped reading my Bible as much and I still doing the things that not that that gives you a, a relationship, but like if you don't focus on it, exactly. If you don't go on a date, then you're not going to meet the person. And right. if you don't talk to the person, then things get cold right. and distant. So like, um, kind of like that with God, like, and I started like allowing things to come into my life that were probably not the best. Mm -hmm. And so like, 
kind of being more lukewarm and like mm -hmm. being like only Christian on Sundays. And I will still go to like I graduated from college and everything, but I will still go to college, uh, like go to church. But then on Saturday I'll go out and party, or <laughs> you know I still wanted to see what that world life was about because I never really had, like I was always you know doing the right thing and my parents wouldn't let me go to parties so like I never mm -hmm. experienced what that was about and it gave me a little bit of like curiosity like what mm -hmm. happens when you drink what happens when you yeah. um go out and party all night or you know like hang out with people that uh probably don't believe the same things you believe so allowing those things in my life I feel like it opened up just being lukewarm not being so on fire for God not being so uh, f firm on your beliefs mm -hmm. so um got married and uh find like i was working i still like you know i still pray i still you know like people can see the difference in me but i wasn't like super open about my faith and things like that uh so once i had my son it was like god was like knocking at my door again it was like mm -hmm. so what are you gonna teach your child what what mm -hmm. kind of legacy are you leaving him like what kind of like wow what what are you doing that's heavy thing? yeah <laughs> i don't know god um, <laughs> well <laughs> so i can yeah so like if i keep going the same way that i'm going right now like my son is not really gonna know god mm -hmm. my son is not really gonna believe in god like he's not gonna feel god close because i'm not close to god like they mm -hmm. say uh where a parent's faith is like we're mm -hmm. a little bit lower mm -hmm. so like if your faith is like way high your kids can like rise mm -hmm. up to that but if your faith is like down here then it's gonna be like way even lower than that yeah. i don't know that's what yeah. they say <laughs> i have yeah. some statistics about that uh but um so yeah that i it was like okay i if i'm gonna if I'm gonna be a Christian, then I'm gonna be for real. Like if I'm gonna follow yeah. God, then I'm gonna be for real. Cause I need, like my what my parents' example that they gave me was so strong that I wanted to do that same for them. I, looking mm -hmm. back on my life, I was like, the things that have kept me going, the things that have given me hope, that mm -hmm. it's my relationship with God. It's yeah. that moment when I gave my life to Jesus. It's that moment mm -hmm. when I, prayed in tongues is that moment when I was choosing what to do with my career and I mm -hmm. got let me and open up all these doors yeah so and we have responsibility as parents so it sounds like that's what God was saying in that moment you know because you're going to teach them something so what is it going to be you know yeah. we're their first teachers you know so yeah it's, sure. it's a big responsibility yeah yeah so then you were like okay let me go to church now <laughs> okay <laughs> let me I'm gonna take you to church seriously. now <laughs> yeah now my husband is like oh my gosh you're in church too much <laughs> oh yeah because your husband is not like a charismatic christian he's yeah, he's catholic okay actually. he's catholic so he has a catholic background which yeah i mean you have a relationship with god you know god mm -hmm. exists right but it's like you don't have to do all these things uh -huh. just do all these things and you're fine yeah so yeah. it's like no i wanna like when it's your personal relationship there is more mm -hmm. you know there is more you want to do things because yes. exactly I, that's what love. people don't understand because there's a difference between doing things because you trying to get god to accept you and that's not what it is it's once you're you you're in that place then you just want to do more for him yeah, yeah. It, it flows it's like where the source is like mm -hmm. it flows out of your relationship exactly. of love towards god right. instead of flowing out of a duty uh, you have right. to do this many prayers so that god will hear you or you have yes. to go to church this one day because those are the really important days yeah. or like that's kind of like what i've seen in the opposite uh, between like one thing or the other because mm -hmm. when it, you when you have to do things you don't want to do them because yeah. it's like mm -hmm. out of out of religiosity which or obligation or, yeah it's yeah. just like mm. yeah so that has been and i feel like our children will be able to see the difference and mm -hmm. i feel like it just kind of gives them an opportunity to to learn and see and, and choose mm -hmm. for themselves because it gets to a point that they're gonna have to choose for themselves they're gonna yeah. have to make mistakes and choose you know and, and get back up so 
yeah. you give them kind of like the best you can with what you have and then they will have to make their own decisions right. because they right. they have their own mind. <laughs> so your husband thinks you're in church too much, huh? <laughs> Yes. Because you go Wednesday night to switch, and then I know Sunday, you don't have prayer Sunday. team every, I mean, no, you don't really meet Sunday. for it, but you serve on prayer team yes, every Yes, and I serve with the kids on Saturdays. I love oh, going gosh. to church on Saturdays, so okay. I serve on Saturdays, and then they, they only have one service, so I can't go. Like So I go to mm-hmm. actually sit down and be there on Sunday, Sunday. and then, uh, so we switch, like, so it's like, okay, let's do a compromise. So if one, <laughs> one, one Sunday that he's off because he works weekends. So we go to his church and then we go to my church. So we like trade it like that. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you go back and forth. Uh. And then I also help <laughs> with the homeless. So oh, we know wow. that, that, that's a, uh, it's every other Saturday. So okay, we do that and then, yeah. I love that. I love yes. that. I, I think God has a heart for the homeless. Oh, for sure. so much. And they're so yeah. beautiful. Like... Mm-hmm. That you learn so much from them, from their faith. Like they have, mm-hmm. so I've met people that have, they they went to church when they were little, and they mm-hmm. made mistakes, and they ended up in their situations, and right. they still like God loves them so much. Mm-hmm. Like when you pray for people, like I'm like I just feel the heart of God of love towards you. Like yes. this is not the end of you. Yes, this doesn't have. And then when they see like, wow, you see me as a person, right. not as a you know, like it gives them hope. Like uh, there was a lady I was praying for, and she was done with life. Like she mm-hmm. had a stroke when she was little. Her hands are like this, okay. and uh, she's in a wheelchair. Like she's homeless. She lives in the street, um, mm. and she was done. Like she didn't even want us to pray, but God was like, pray for her. And uh, we just, me and a friend, we started talking to her and like, mm-hmm. it was like God showing her how much she loves. She's just crying and, she, you know, mm-hmm. telling her all these beautiful things that God thinks about her. Mm-hmm. Give her gave her hope. Last time I saw her, she was like, hey, oh. like super <laughs> excited. I'm like, wow. Awesome. And even after the prayer, I was like, how do you feel? And she's like, I feel so much better. Mm-hmm. She was like, I was actually thinking about taking my life today. And I'm like, oh. <gasps> Wow. wow like well there's such a stigma and people look down on the homeless and but if you talk to them they all have a story i mean it used to be that everyone or most people that were homeless they made all these bad choices or they got into drugs or drinking and that still can be the case but it's not everyone's story mm-hmm. it could be that you know something happened or you know the the landlord threw them out or i mean there's just any story yes. and they're you know real human beings yeah and sometimes yeah. they have like mental uh issues mental, like yeah. uh, like torments you know demons right, right. <laughs> can torment them and like make them do things that mm-hmm. and they they can't keep a job so if you mm-hmm. can't keep a job like what do you do you can't get the medicine that you need to yeah well, you have to believe in the spiritual world if you want to bring demons in. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, we believe in the spiritual world realm and that the enemy really does come against, especially um, people that are trying to do things for God. Mm-hmm. Um, he really, he really does. I mean, he comes against anybody. But, yeah. But yeah, he can torment someone to where they can't, you know, can't really function. Yeah. Yes. It's it's really it's sad. Hard. Yes. It's really sad. But it's just so beautiful to be able to do those things not out of duty, but out of like a relationship with God and mm-hmm. like, you know, even spending time with God doesn't have to be uh, a rule, right. uh, duty, uh, like uh, I have to do this because mm-hmm. I'm a Christian. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to check that off the list. Yeah. And it's, it's it, like a relationship can fall into that, mm-hmm. but it doesn't have to. So that's yeah. kind of like where I'm at now. It's, you know, life is just fun and exciting and, mm-hmm. and you know, talking to God every day and seeing what he has for today and, like, mm-hmm. even raising my kids, you know, trying, like, for them to follow God. And, like, they always know, hey, so let's pray. And, like, they're mm-hmm. like, so Jesus says this. And, like, <laughs> God is. So, like, they learn all these songs and How they cute. just learn the, yeah, they're learning verses. And, like, Aww. it's just such a beautiful age when you can mm-hmm. raise them up in 
um, yeah. around believers. I raised them up around, like maybe I don't have the same community that my parents did when they right. when I was growing up, but you can make that community mm -hmm. work in, in your own as you get more involved. Because um, you have a daughter too. I right? have a daughter, okay. yes. Mm -hmm. But she's not in the school, so like she goes with me on, to prayer. Um, oh, and like okay. Mondays we have prayer, so yeah, I go Monday too. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, most days of the week, so yeah, I don't yeah, know. So he has, he has yeah. a right to complain because Saturday, we, Sunday, <laughs> Monday, Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. No, it's okay. Yeah, but there are worse things you could be doing, right? I mean, yeah, I could be spending money I on this. Worry, yeah, all. I wouldn't worry too much. She's a church. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I was like, yeah. 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 Oh, if I wasn't working, I would go to that Monday prayer too in no the morning. Yeah. That would be awesome too. So, it is. well, I think that's awesome because you're training your children to, you know, yeah. go in the way that hopefully you want them to go. Yeah. Like I have teenagers, so it's just like forget it. I hold another monster. <laughs> yeah, do it now because once they're at this age, it's like mom is. <laughs> yes. We're not listening to mom anymore. No. We're, we're no. done. No. <laughs> yeah. And I think that was my thing. I was when I was a teenager I had a hard time like following like what my mom will say and I remember her being like, mm -hmm. You're gonna know one day. Uh -huh. And like once yeah. I lived on my own, like I was seventeen years old, I was like on my own, no family. Seventeen, oh yes. my goodness. I turned wow. eighteen when I was like in Puerto Rico and I was like, Oh my gosh, that's that's my since that birthday, I think I haven't had a birthday with my family, like my birth family. Oh no. Then. And I'm like thirty six. Yeah. But you've gone back to visit them? I or visit not? them okay. and they come and visit and stuff. Okay. But um it's just like the life that I chose and like mm -hmm. um <clears throat> still like you don't like you have to make your own decisions. So, like I realize now I appreciate more what my mom did because yeah. And how she trained me, or how mm -hmm. she, the things that she would tell me, because I knew they were for my, for the best for me. Yeah. And um, then I realized that after you know I had kids, and mm -hmm. after I had messed up, and then after yeah. I realized, oh no, my mom was right. Yeah, I've heard that a lot. You know that, but it takes you having kids and going through some things. So. I'm like, yeah, these kids just aren't going to know much until they get their own family going and yeah. stuff. And then they're going to be calling me. Yes. <laughs> Mom, yes. how did you yes. How did you deal with this? Yes. Um, so For it's sure. not easy parenting either. So. Oh, no. And you have you live on some land with like animals yeah. and <laughs> that's not part of the interview. But I'm just like, I want to go out there and meet the yes, chickens and everything. We so should do like a, so, something. Yeah, yeah, one day. Yeah. So, well, thank you. Thank you. Should we do like a little Spanish something? I don't know. ¿Qué yeah. quieres decir en español? Nada. No. No sé. No sé. We can pray in Spanish. Okay. Sí, ore. Sí, ore por nosotros en español. Vamos a orar en español. Okay. Okay. Padre Santo, gracias por este día. Gracias por esta oportunidad de tener esa conversación con April. Y gracias, Padre, por cada persona por la que tú vas a tocar a través de este testimonio que toque sus corazones y sus mentes y, su, y los anime a... Um, a, a tomar las decisiones que tú estás queriendo que ellos tomen, a decirte que sí a ti, a glorificarte a ti con nuestras vidas. Señor, gracias por uh, tu fidelidad, gracias porque tu mano siempre ha estado con nosotros, aun cuando nosotros uh, no hemos estado contigo. Um, gracias porque tú siempre has sido fiel, Señor, y te bendecimos, te exaltamos y te damos gracias por tu mano tocando a cada persona que... Um, que vea este, este video y escuche este testimonio en el nombre de Jesús. Amén y amén. Amén. Thanks, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.